Forward. A collection of stale cream puffs. Chocolate creams, who hath forgotten you? At a time when Bill W. was perceiving the coroner's children, as to why a reprint, no lesson to be learned save the depth of ignorance, or rather the superficiality of non-perception, neither eye nor ear, ignorant that didn't know the meaning of Wardour Street. E.P. San Ambrogio, 19th of August, 1964. Alume Spento, 1908. Grace Before Song. Lord God of heaven, that with mercy dight, the alternate prayer wheel of the night and light, eternal hath to thee, and in whose sight, our days as raindrops in the sea surge fall. As bright white drops upon a leaden sea, grant so my song to this grey folk may be, as drops that dream and gleam and falling catch the sun, evanescent mirrors every opal one. Of such his splendour as their compass is, so bold my song, seek ye such death as this. The Frine Scene, the Ashwood of Malvern For I was a gaunt grave counsellor, being in all things wise and very old, but I have put aside this folly and the cold that old age weareth for a cloak. I was quite strong, at least they said so, the young men at the sword play, but I have put aside this folly being gay in another fashion that more suiteth me. I have curled mid the boles of the ash wood, I have hidden my face where the oak, spread his leaves over me and the yoke of the old ways of men have I cast aside, by the still pool of Marnan offer have I found me a bride. That was a dogwood tree some sign, she hath called me from mine old ways, she hath hushed my rancor of counsel, bidding me praise. Nought but the wind that flutters in the leaves. She hath drawn me from mine old ways, till men say that I am mad, but I have seen the sorrow of men, and am glad, for I know that the wailing and bitterness are a folly. And I, I have put aside all folly and all grief, I wrapped my tears in an elm leaf, and left them under a stone. And now men call me mad, because I have thrown all folly from me, putting it aside, to leave the barren ways of men, because my bride is a pool of the wood, and though all men say that I am mad, it is only that I am glad, very glad, for my bride hath toward me a great love, that is sweeter than the love of women that plague and burn and drive one away. Ay, tis true that I am gay, quite gay, for I have her alone here, and no man troubleth us. Once when I was among the young men, and they said I was quite strong among the young men, once there was a woman, but I forget she was, I hope she will not come again. I do not remember. I think she hurt me once, but that was very long ago. I do not like to remember things any more. I like one little band of winds that blow in the ash trees here, for we are quite alone here amid the ash trees. Chino Scene Italian countryside, 1309, the open road. Bah, I have sung women in three cities, but it is all the same, and I will sing of the sun. Lips, words, and you snare them, dreams, words, and they are as jewels, strange spells of old deity, ravens, knights, allurement, and they are not, having become the souls of song. Eyes, dreams, lips, and the night goes, being upon the road once more, they are not. Forgetful in their towers of our tuning, once for wind ruining, they dream us toward, and sighing say, Would Chino, passionate Chino, of the wrinkling eyes, gay Chino, of quick laughter, Chino of the dare, the jibe, frail Chino, strongest of his tribe, that tramp old ways beneath the sunlight, would Chino of the luth were here. Once, twice a year, Vaguely thus word they, Chino, oh, a eh, Chino Polnese, the singer, is it you mean? Ah, uh, yes, passed once our way, a saucy fellow, but, oh, they are all one, these vagabonds, pest, 
tis his own songs or some others that he sings. But you, my lord, how with your city? But you, my lord, God's pity, and all I knew were out, my lord, you were Lackland Chino, even as I am, O Sinistro. I have sung women in three cities, but it is all one. I will sing of the sun. Eh, they mostly had grey eyes, but it is all one. I will sing of the sun. Apollo Phoebe, old tin pan, you glory to Zeus's aegis day. Shield a steel blue, the heaven over us hath for thy boss thy lustre gay. Apollo Phoebe, to our wayfare, make thy laugh our wonder lead. Bid thy fulgence bear away care, cloud and rain tears past they fleet, seeking ever the new laid rast way to the gardens of the sun. I have sung women in three cities, but it is all one. I will sing of the white birds in the blue waters of heaven, the clouds that are spray to its sea. In Epitaphium Eos Servant and singer, troubadour, that for his loving loved each fair face more, then craven sluggard can his life's one love, dowered with love, whereby the sun doth move and all the stars, they called him fickle, that the lambent flame caught Bice, dreaming in each new-blown name. And love's all fairness through its hidden guise, lurked various in half an hundred eyes, that loved the essence through each casement bore, a different semblance than the one before. Na odiat, que bem vols mal. Note, anyone who has read anything of the troubadours knows well the tale of Bertrand of Bourne and my lady mate of Montaigne, and knows also the song he made when she would none of him, the song wherein he, seeking to find or make her equal, begs of each pre-eminent lady of Languedoc some trait or some fair semblance, Thus of Sembelina, her Esgart Amoros, to wit, her love-lit glance, of Aelis, her speech free-running, of the Vic Vicontess of Chalet, her throat in her two hands, at Rocart of Anhers, her hair golden as Isult's, and even in this fashion of Lady Odiot. Although she would that ill come unto him, he sought and praved the lineament of the Tors, and all this to make una domna sois Buddha, a borrowed lady, or if the Italian have translated it, una donna ideal. Though thou well dost wish me ill, Odiat, Odiat, where thy bodice's laces start, its ivy fingers clutching through its crevices, Odiat, Odiat, stately tall and lovely tender, who shall render, Odiat, Odiat, praises meet unto thy fashion, hear a word kiss. Pass I on unto Lady Mieda Ben, having praved thy girdle scope, how the stays ply back from it, I breathe no hope that thou shouldst. Nay, no wit, bespeak thyself for anything, just a word in thy praise, girl, just for the swirl, thy satins make upon the stair, cause never a flaw was there, where thy torse and limbs are met, though thou hate me, read it set, in rose and gold, or when the minstrel tale half told, shall burst to lilting at the praise, ordiat, ordiat. Bertrand, master of his lays, Bertrand of Altafort, thy praise sets forth, and thou, though hate me well, yet though thou wish me ill, ordiat, ordiat, thy loveliness is here writ till, ordiat, o oh, till thou come again. And being bent and wrinkled in a form that hath no perfect limning, when the warm youth dew is cold upon thy hands and thy old soul, scorning a new ride casement, churlish at seemed misplacement, Find the earth as bitter as now seems it sweet, being so young and fair as then only in dreams. Being then young and ride, broken of ancient pride, thou shalt then soften, knowing I know not how thou wert once she. Ordiat, ordiat, for whose fairness one forgave, ordiat, ordiat, que ben vol mal. Villa no for this yule. Towards the Noel that mort saison, Christ make the shepherds homage dear. Then when the grey wolves every chone, Drink of the wind their chill small beer, And lap of the snow's food's garridon, 
then maketh my heart his yuletide cheer. Skoal with the dregs if the clear be gone, whining the ghosts of yesteryear. Ask ye what ghost I dream upon, what of the magian scented gear, the ghosts of dead loves every one, that make the stark winds reek with fear, lest love return with the foison sun, and slay the memories that me cheer, such as I drink to mine fashion, whining the ghosts of yesteryear. Where are the joys my heart had won, Saturn and Mars to Zeus drawn near? Where are the lips mine lay upon? I wear the glances feet and clear, that bade my heart his valour don. I scold to the eyes as grey-blown mere, who knows whose was that paragon, whining the ghosts of yesteryear. Prince, ask me not what I have done, nor what God hath can me cheer. But ye ask first where the winds are gone, whining the ghosts of yesteryear. A Villanode, Ballad of the Gibbet, or the Song of the Sixth Companion. Scene, on se Bordeaux ou tenant notre etat. It being remembered that there were six of us with Master Villon, when that, expecting presently to be hanged, he writ a ballad whereof ye know, Frere Uman qui après nous vive. Drink ye a skull for the gallows tree, Francois and Margot and thee and me. Drink we the comrades merrily that set us till then for the gallows tree. Fat Pierre with the hook gaucheman, Thomas Laron, ere the less, Thibault and that armoress who gave this poignard its premier stain, pinning the guise that had been fain to make him a mate of the haute noblesse, and bade her be out with ill address as a fool that mocketh his druse disdain. Drink we a skull for the gallows tree, Francois and Margot and thee and me. Drink we to Marianne Idole, that hell burn not her o'er cruelly. Drink we the lusty robbers twain, black as the pitch of their wedding dress, lips shrunk back for the wind's caress, as lips shrink back when we feel the strain of love that loveth in hell's disdain, and sent the teeth through the lips that press, gainst our lips for the soul's distress that striveth to ours across the pain. Drink we skull to the gallows tree, Francois and Margot and thee and me, for Jehan and Raoul de Valerie, whose frames have the night and its winds in fee. Masseron, Guillaume, Jacques d'Almain, Kuldu lacking a coat to bless, one lean moiety of his nakedness that plundered St. Hubert back of the fane. I, the lean bare tree, is widowed again for Michaud de Bourne yet would confess in faith and troth to a traitoress which of his brothers had he slain. But drink we skull to the gallows tree, Francois and Margot and thee and me, thieves that we loved shall God love this, and smite all ways at their fableness. Thieves that we loved shall God love less, and smite away at their fableness. Skull to the gallows, and then pray we, God damn his hell out speedily, and bring their souls to his haute city. Mesmerism And a cat's in the water butt, Robert Browning, Mesmerism Aye, you're a man that, ye old mesmeriser, tying your meaning in seventy swaddlings. One must of needs be a hanged early riser to catch you at worm-turning, holy odds bodikins. Cats in the water butt, thoughts in your verse barrel, tell us this thing rather than we'll believe you. You master Bob Browning, spite your apparel, jump to your sense and give praise as we'd leave to. You wheezes a head cold, long tonsilled calliope, but God, what a sight you had got out our innards. Mad as a hatter, but surely, surely no myope. Broad as all ocean, and learn, leaning man kinneds. Heart that was big as the bowels of Vesuvius, words that were winged as her sparks in eruption, eagled and thundered as Jupiter Pluvius, sound in your wind past all signs of corruption. Here's to you, old hippity hop of the accents, true to truth's sake and crafty dissector. You grabbed at the gold shore, had no need to pack sense into your versicles, clear sight elector. Fafine answers. Why is it that disgrace they seem to relish life the more? Fafine at the fair, number seven, line five. 
Sharing his exile that hath borne the flame, joining his freedom that hath drunk the shame, and known the torture of the school plays hours, free and so bound that mingled with powers of air and sea and light his soul's far reach, yet stricture did the body lips beseech to drink, I thirst, and then the sponge of gall. Wherefore we wastrels at the grey road's call, doth master and make slaves and yet make free, drink all of life and quaffing lustily, take bitter with the sweet without complain, and share as in his drink defy the pain that makes you fearful to unfurl your souls. We claim no glory, if the tempest rolls, about us we have fear, and then, having so small a stake, grow bold again. We know not def definitely even this, but cause some vague half-knowing half doth miss. Our consciousness and leaves us feeling that somehow all is well, that sober reeling from the laughed carouse or in what measure of so-called right or so damned wrong our leisure runs out uncounted sand beneath the sun that spite your carping still the thing is done. With some deep sanction that we know not how without our thought gives feeling you allow that tis not need we know our every thought or see the workshop where each mask is wrought, wherefrom we view the world of box and pit, careless of where, just so the mask shall fit, and serve our japes turn for a night or two. Call a by the little door at twelve, I meet you there myself. Anima Sola Then neither is the bright orb of the sun greeted, nor yet either the shaggy might of earth or sea, Thus then, in the firm vessel of harmony, is fixed God, a sphere, round, rejoicing in complete solitude. Empedocles. Exquisite loneliness, bound of mine own caprice, I fly on the wings of an unknown chord, that she hear not, cannot discern. My music is weird and untamed, barbarous, wild, extreme, I fly on the note that ye hear not, on the chord that ye cannot dream. And lo, your outworn harmonies are behind me, as ashes and mouldy bread. I die in the tears of the morning, I kiss the wail of the dead. My joy is the wind of heaven, my drink is the gall of night, my love is the light of meteors, the autumn leaves in flight. I pendant sit in the veil of fate, I twine the maenad strands, and lo, the three Eumenides take justice at my hands, for I fly in the gale of an unknown chord, the blood of light is God's delight, and I am the lifeblood's ward. O loneliness, O loneliness, thou boon of the fires blown, from heaven to hell and back again, thou cup of the God-man's own. For I am a weird untamed, that eat of no man's meat. My house is the rain ye wail against, my drink is the wine of sleet. My music is your disharmony, intangible, most mad, for the clang of a thousand cymbals, where the sphinx smiles over the sand, and vile strings that outsing kings, the least of my command, exquisite, alone, untrammeled. I kiss the nameless sign, and the laws of my inmost being, Chant to the nameless shrine. I flee on the wing of a note ye know not. My music disowns your law. Ye cannot tread the road I wed. And lo, I refuse your bidding. I will not bow to the expectation that ye have. Lo, I am gone as a red flame into the mist. My chord is unresolved by your counter harmonies. In tempore senectutis, in old age. For we are old, and the earth passion dieth. We have watched him die a thousand times. When he wanes, an old wind crieth. For we are old, and passion hath died for us a thousand times, but we grew never weary. Memory faileth, as the lotus-loved chimes sink into fluttering of wind, but we grow never weary, for we are old. The strange night wonder of your eyes dies not though passion flieth along the star fields of Acturus, and is no more unto our hands. My lips are cold, and yet we twain are never weary. 
and the strange night wonder is upon us. The leaves hold our wonder in their flutterings, the wind fills our mouths with strange words, for our wonder that grows not old. The moth hour of our day is upon us, holding the dawn. There is strange night wonder in our eyes, because the moth hour leadeth the dawn as a maiden, holding her fingers, the rosy slender fingers of the dawn. He Red spears bore the warrior dawn of old, strange love hast thou forgotten, the red spears of the dawn, the penance of the morning. She, nay, I remember, but now, cometh the dawn and the moth hour, together with him softly, for we are old. Famam librosque cano. I sing of fame in books. Your songs, oh, the little mothers, will sing them in the twilight and when the night shrinketh the kiss of the dawn that loves and kills, what time the swallow fills her note than the little rabbit folk that some call children, such as are up and wide, will laugh your verses to each other, pulling on their shoes for the day's business, serious child business that the world laughs at and grows stale, such is the tale, part of it, of thy song life. Mine... A book is known by them that read that same, thy public in my screed is listed. Well, some score years hence, behold, mine audience, as we had seen him yesterday. Scrawny, bespectacled, out at heels, such an one as the world fields, a sort of curse against its guzzling, and its age-lasting wallow for red greed and yet full speed, though it should run for its own getting, will turn aside to sneer at. Cause he hath no coin, no will to snatch the aftermath of Mammon. Such an one as women draw away from, for the tobacco ashes scattered on his coat, and sith his throat shows razor's unfamiliarity and three days' beard, such an one picking a ragged, backless copy from the stall, too cheap for cataloguing, loquitur. Ah, eh. The strange rare name, ah, a eh, he must be rare if even I have not. And lost mid-page such age as his pardons the habit. He analyses form and thought to see how I escaped immortality. The Cry of the Eyes Rest, master, for we be a-weary, weary, and would feel the fingers of the wind upon these lids that lie over us, sodden and lead heavy. Rest, brother, for lo, the dawn is without, the yellow flame paleth, and the wax runs low. Free us, for without be goodly colours, green of the wood moss and flower colours, and coolness beneath the trees. Free us, for we perish in this ever-flowing monotony, of ugly print marks, black upon white parchment. Free us, for there is one whose smile more availeth than all the age-old knowledge of thy books, and we would look thereon. Scriptor Ignotus To K. R. H. Ferrara, 1715 When I see thee as some poor songbird, battering its wings against this cage we call today, then would I speak comfort unto thee, from out the heights I dwell in when that great sense of power is upon me, and I see my greater soul self bending, sibyl wise, with that great forty year epic that you know of yet unwrit, but as some child's toy tween my fingers, and see the sculptors of new ages carve me thus, and model with the music of my couplets in their hearts. Surely if in the end the epic and the small kind deed are one, if to God the child's toy and the epic are the same, even so, did one make a child's toy, he might write it well, and cunningly that the child might keep it for his children's children, and all have joy thereof. Dear, and this dream come true, then shall all men say of thee, she it was that played him power at life's morn, and at the twilight even song, 
and God's peace dwelt in the mingled chords she drew from out the shadows of the past, and old world melodies that else he had known only in his dreams of Isult and of Beatrice. Dear, and this dream come true, I, who being poet only, can give thee poor words only, add this one poor other tribute, this thing men call immortality, a gift I give thee even as Ronsard gave it, seeing before his time one sweet face grown old, and seeing the old eyes grow bright, from out the border of her violet wrinkles, if she should make boast unto her maids. Ronsard hath sung the beauty, my beauty, of the day that I was fair. So hath the boon been given by the poets of old time, Dante to Beatrice, and I profane not, Yet with my lesser power shall I not strive to give it to thee? All ends of things are with him from whom all things are in their essence. If my power be lesser, shall my striving be less keen. But rather more, if I should reach the goal, take then the striving. And if, for so the Florentine hath writ, when having put all his heart into his youth's dear book, yet he strove to do more honour, to that lady dwelling in his inmost soul, he would wax yet greater to make her earthly glory more. Though sight of hell and heaven were priced thereof, if so it be his will with whom are all things and through whom are all things good, will I make for thee and for the beauty of thy music a new thing, as hath not heretofore been writ. Take then my promise. Note. Bertold Lomax, English Dante scholar and mystic, died in Ferrara in 1723, with his great epic still a mere shadow, a nebula croft with some few gleams of wonder light. The lady of the poem was an organist of Ferrara, whose memory has come down to, to us only in Lomax's notes. Doncella Beata Era mi mea, in qua terra Dolce mirti floribus, rosa amores, via errores, ad te coram veniam. Soul, caught in the rose-hued mesh of over-fair earthly flesh, stooped you these things to bear again for me, and be rare light to me gold-white in the shadowy path I tread. Surely a bolder maid art thou than one in tearful, fearful longing that should wait, lily cinctured at the gate of high heaven, star diadem, crying that I should come to thee. Vanna In vain have I striven to teach my heart to bow, in vain have I said to him, there be many singers greater than thou, but his answer cometh, as winds and as lutany, as a vague crying upon the night that leaveth me no rest, saying ever, Song, a song. Their echoes play upon each other in twilight, seeking ever a song. Lo, I am worn with travail, and the wandering of many roads hath made my eyes as dark red circles filled with dust. Yet there is a trembling upon me in the twilight, and little red elf words crying, A song! Little grey elf words crying for a song, little brown leaf words crying a song, little green leaf words crying for a song. The words are as leaves, old brown leaves in the springtime, blowing they know, they know not whither, seeking a song. Libel Chasteus That castle stands the highest in the land, far seen and mighty, of the great hewn stones, what shall I say, and deep foss way, that far beneath us bore of old a swelling turbid sea, hill-borne and torrent-wise unto the fields below, where staunch villain and wandered burger held the land and tilled, long labouring for gold of wheat grain, and to see the beards come forth the barley's even tide. But circle arched above the home of life, we dwelt amid the ancient boulders, gods had hewn and druids ruined, 
Unto that birth most wondrous that had grown, A mighty fortress while the world had slept, And we awaited in the shadows there, While mighty hands had laboured sightlessly, And shaped this wonder above the ways of men. Me seems we could not see the great green waves, Nor rocky shore by tint of gold, From this our hold, but came faint murmuring as under song, E'en as the burges hung a rose, And died as faint wind melody beneath our gates. That pass between the false dawn and the true, Blown of the winds whose goal is no man knows, As feathered seeds upon the wind are born, To kiss as winds kiss and to melt as snows, And in our passing taste of all men's scorn, Writes of a dream that fragrant ever blows, From out the night we know not to the morn, Born upon winds whose goal is no man knows, an hour to each we greet the hour flows, and joins its hue to mighty hues outworn, weaving the perfect picture while we torn, give cry in harmony and weep the rose, blown of the wind whose goal is no man knows. In Mort Day O oh, wine sweet ghost, how are we born apart? Of winds that restless blow we know not where, As little shadows smoke wraith sudden start, If music break the freighted dream of air. So fragile curlet thou in my dream-racked heart, So sudden summon doth thou leave it bare. O oh, wine-sweet ghost, how are we born apart, As little flames amid the dead coal dart, And lose themselves upon some hidden stair. So futile elfin be we well aware, Old cries, I cry to thee as I depart. O oh, wine, sweet ghost, how are we born apart? Thranos No more for us the little sighing, No more the winds at twilight trouble us. Lo, the fair dead. No more do I burn, No more for us the fluttering of wings That word the air above us. Lo, the fair dead. No more desire flayeth me, no more for us the trembling at the meeting of hands, lo, the fair dead. No more for us the wine of the lips, no more for us the knowledge, lo, the fair dead. No more the torrent, no more for us the meeting place, lo, the fair dead, Tintagol. Camaraderie. E tutoque io fosse alla campagna di molti, quanto alla vista. Sometimes I feel thy cheek against my face, close pressing, soft as is the south's first breath, that all the subtle earth things summoneth to spring in woodland and in meadow space. Yea, sometimes in a bustling man filled place, me seemeth somewise thy hair wandereth across my eyes as mist that halloweth. The air a while and giveth all things grace. Or on still evenings when the rain falls close, There comes a tremor in the drops and fast my pulses run, Knowing thy thought had passed, That beareth thee as doth the wind arose. Ballad Rosalind our Lord is set in his great oak throne, For our Lord liveth all alone, These ten years and gone. A book on his knees and bent his head, For our old Lord's love is long since dead, These ten years and gone. For our young Lord Hugh went to the east, And fought for the cross and is crow's feast, These ten years and gone. But where is our Lady Rosalind, Fair as day and fleet as wind, These ten years and gone. For our old lord broodeth all alone, Silent and grey in his black oak throne, These ten years and gone. Our old lord broodeth silent there, For to question him none will dare, These ten years and more. Where is our lady Rosalind, Fair as dawn and fleet as wind, These ten years and gone. Our old lord sits with never a word, And only the flame and the wind are heard, These ten years and more. 
Father, I come, and she knelt at the throne. Father, know me, I am thine own, these ten years and more. Have they kept me for ransom at Shastel door, and never a word have I heard from thee, these ten years and more. But our old Lord answered never a word, and only sobbing and wind were heard, these ten years and gone. We took our Lord and his great oak throne, and set them deep in a vault of stone, these ten years and gone. A book on his knees and bowed his head, for the Lord of our old Lord's love is dead, these ten years and gone. And Lady Rosalind rules in his stead, thank we God for our daily bread, these ten years and more. Maurin. And this appears to be a prose poem. Malrin, because of his jesting, stood without, till all the guests were entered in unto the Lord's house. Then there came an angel unto him, saying, Malrin, why hast thou tarried? To whom, Malrin, there is no feeding till the last sheep be gone into the fold. Wherefore I stayed chaffing the laggards, and mayhap when it was easy helping the weak. Saith the angel, The Lord will be wroth with thee, Malrin, that thou art last. Nay, sirrah, quipped Malrin, I knew my lord when thou and thy wings were yet in the egg. Saith the angel, Peace, hasten lest there be no bread for thee, rattle tongue. Ho, oh, quoth Malrin, is it thus that thou knowest the, my lord? Aye, I am his fool and have felt his lash, but me seems that thou hast set thy ignorance to my folly, saying, Hasten lest there be an end to his bread. Whereat the angel went in in wrath, and Malrin, turning slowly, beheld the last blue of twilight and the sinking of the silver of the stars, and the sun sank down like cooling gold in their crucibles, and there was a murmuring amid the azure curtains and far clarions from the keep of heaven, as a muzen crying, Allahu Akbar, Allah il Akbar, it is finished. And Malrin beheld the broidery of the stars become as wind-worn tapestries of ancient wars, and the memory of all old songs swept by him as a host, blue-robed, trailing in dream, Odysseus and Tristram, and the pale great gods of Storm, the mailed Campiador and Roland and Vion's women, and they of Valhalla, and a cascade of dull sapphires, so poured they out of the mist and were gone, and above them the stronger, stronger clarion, as a muezzin, crying, Allah Akbar, Allah il Allah, it is finished. And again Malrin, drunk as with the dew of old word druidings, was bowed in dream. And the third dream of Malrin was the dream of the seven, and no man knoweth it. And a third time came the clarion, and after it the Lord called softly unto Malrin, Son, why hast thou tarried? Is it not fulfilled, thy dream and mine? And Malrin, O Lord, I am thy fool, and thy love hath been my scourge and my wonder, my wine and mine ecstasy. But one left me a wrath and went in unto thy table. I tarried till his anger was blown out. O Lord, for the ending of a dream I kiss thee, for his anger is with the names of Deirdre and Isolt, and our dream is ended. Padre. Now we're back to poetry. Masks. These tales of old disguisings are they not? Strange myths of souls that found themselves among unwanted folk that spake a hostile tongue. Some soul from all the rest who'd not forgot the star span acres of a former lot, where boundless mid the clouds his course he swung, or Carnet with his elder brother's song. Ere ballad makers lisped of Camelot. Old singers half forgetful of their tunes, old painters colour blind come back once more, old poets skillless in the wind heart runes, old wizards lacking in their wonder lore, all they that with strange sadness in their eyes ponder in silence over earth's quaint device. On his own face in a glass. O oh, strange face there in the glass, O oh, ribald company, O oh, saintly host, O oh, sorrow swept my fool, what answer? O oh, ye myriad that strive and play and pass, jest, challenge, counter lie, 
I, 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 and ye. The tree. I stood still and was a tree amid the wood, knowing the truth of things unseen before, of Daphne and the laurel bough, and that God-feasting couple old, that grew elm oak amid the wold. T'was not until the gods had been kindly entreated and been brought within, unto the hearth of their heart's home, that they might do this wonder thing. Nathless I have been a tree amid the wood, and many new things understood, that were rank folly to my head before. In vain, earth's winter cometh, and I being part of all, and sith the spirit of all moveth in me, I must needs bear earth's winter. Drawn cold and grey with hours, enjoying in a momentary song, lo, I am withered with waiting till my spring cometh, or crouch covetous of warmth, or a scant logged angle blaze, must take cramped joy in tongued longinus, that read I him first time, the woods agleam with summer, or amid desirous winds of spring had set me singing spheres, or made heart to wander forth among warm roses, or curl in grass nest neath a kindly moon. Plotinus As one that would draw through the node of things, back sweeping to the vortex of the cone, Cloistered about with memories, alone, in chaos, while the waiting silence sings. Obliviate of cycles wanderings, I was an atom on creation's throne, and knew all nothing my unconquered own. God, should I be the hand upon the strings? But I was lonely as a lonely child, I cried amid the void and heard no cry, and then for utter loneliness made I, new thoughts as crescent images of me. And with them was my essence reconciled, while fear went forth from mine eternity. Prometheus For we be the beaten ones, and the bearers of the flame, Ourselves have died lang sign, and we go ever upwards as the spark of light, Enkindling all against whom our shadows fall. Weary to sink, yet ever upward born, flame, flame that riseth ever, to the flame within the sun, tearing our casement ever, for the way is one that beareth upward to the flame within the sun. Egupton I, even I, am he who knoweth the roads, through the sky, and the wind thereof is of my body. I have beheld the Lady of Life, I, even I, that fly with the swallows, green and grey is her raiment, trailing along the wind. I, even I, am he who knoweth the roads, through the sky and the wind thereof is my body. Manus animam pinxit, my pen is in my hand. To write the acceptable word, my mouth to chant the pure singing. Who hath the mouth to receive it, the song of the lotus of Kumi? I, even I, am he who knoweth the roads, through the sky and the wind thereof is my body. I am flame that riseth in the sun, I, even I, that fly with the swallows. For the moon is upon my forehead, the winds are under my kiss. The moon is a great pearl in the waters of sapphire, cool to my fingers the flowing waters. I, even I, am he who knoweth the roads, of the sky and the wind thereof is my body. I will return unto the halls of the flowing, of the truth of the children of Eshu. I, even I, am he who knoweth the roads, of the sky and the wind thereof is my body. Ballad for Gloom For God, our God, is a gallant foe that playeth behind the veil. I have loved my God as a child at heart that seeketh deep bosoms for rest. I have loved my God as made to man, but lo, this thing is best. To love your God as a gallant foe that plays behind the veil, to meet your God as the night winds meet, beyond Arcturus's pale. I have played with God for a woman, I have staked with my God for truth, I have lost to my God as a man clear-eyed, his dice be not of ruth. 
For I am made as a naked blade, but hear ye this thing in sooth. Who loseth to God as a man to man shall win at the turn of the game. I have drawn my blade where the lightnings meet, but the ending is the same. Who loseth to God as the sword blades lose shall win at the end of the game. For God our God is a gallant foe that playeth behind the veil. Whom God deigns not to overthrow hath need of triple mail. For E. McSee. That was my counterblade under Leonardo Tyrone, master of fence. Gone while your tastes were keen to you, gone where the grey winds call to you, by that high fencer even death, struck of the blade that no man parrieth, such as your fence, one saith, one that hath known you, drew you your sword most gallantly, made you your pass most valiantly, gainst that grey fence even death. Gone as a gust of breath, faith no man tarrieth. Say il corti manca, but it failed thee not. Non ti fidar, it is the sword that speaks in me. Thou trusted in thyself and met the blade, without mask or gauntlet and art laid, as memorable broken blades that be, kept as bold trophies of old pageantry, as old Toledo's past their days of war, are kept mnemonic of the strokes they bore. So art thou with us, being good to keep, in our heart sword rack, even thy sword arm sleep. End what? Struck of the blade that no man parrieth, pierced of the point that toucheth lastly all, gainst that grey fencer, even death, behold the shield, he shall not take thee all. Note. Sail called Timanka and non ti fidar. This is a sword rune, which means, if thy heart fail thee, trust not in me. Salve o pontifex, to Swinburne, a hemichaunt. One after one do they leave thee, high priest of Yacus. Toning thy melodies even as winds tone, the whisper of tree leaves on sunlit days, even as the sands are many and the seas beyond the sands are one, in ultimate, so we here being many, are unity. Nathless thy compares, knowing thy melody, lulled with the wine of thy music, go seaward silently, leaving thee sentinel over all the mysteries, high priest of Yacus. For the lines of life lie under thy fingers and above the very coloured strands, Thine eyes look out into the infinitude of the blue waves of heaven, and even as triplex sisterhood, thou fingerest the threads, knowing neither cause nor the ending. High priest of Yacus, drawest forth a multiplicity of strands, and beholding the colour thereof, raises thy voice toward the sunset. O pro high priest of Yacus, and out of the secrets of the inmost mysteries, thou chantest strange, far-sourced canticles, O High Priest of Yacus, Life and the ways of death, her twin-born sister being life's counterpart, an evil being in version of blessing, that blessing herself might have being, and night and the winds of night, silent voices ministering to the souls, of hermadryads that hold counsel concealed, in streams and trees shadowing, forests on hill slopes, O High Priest of Yacus. All the manifold mystery thou makest wine of song of, and maddest thy following, even with visions of great deeds, and their futility, and the worship of love, O high priest of Yacus. Wherefore, though thy co-novice is bent on the scythe of the Magian wind that is voice of Persephone, leaving thee solitary, master of initiating, may an ad that come through the vine-entangled ways of the forest, seeking out of all the world, Madness of Yacus, that being skilled in the secrets of the double cup, they might turn the dead of the world into beauteous paeons, O high priest of Yacus, wreathed with the glory of years of creating, entangled music that men may not over readily understand, breathe. Now that evening cometh upon thee, breathe upon us that low bowed and exultant, drink wine of Yacus, that since the conquering 
hath been chiefly contained in the numbers of them that even as thou have woven wicker baskets for grape clusters, wherein is concealed the, high, the source of the vintage, O high priest of Yacus, breathe thou upon us thy magic in parting. Even as they, thy co-novices, being mingled with the sea, while yet thou madest canticles, serving upright before the altar, that is bound about with shadows, of dead years wherein thy Yacus, look not upon the hills that being, uncared for praise not him in entirety. O high priest of Yacus, being now near to the border of the sands, where the sapphire girdle of the sea, and cinctureth the maiden, Persephone, released for the spring. Look, breathe upon us, the wonder of the thrice and cinctured mystery, whereby thou being full of years art young, loving even this lithe Persephone, that is free for the seasons of plenty. Whereby thou being young art old, and shalt stand before this Persephone, whom thou lovest, in darkness even at that time, that she, being returned to her husband, shall be queen and a maiden no longer, wherein thou, being neither old nor young, standing on the verge of the sea, shalt pass from being sand. O high priest of Yacus, and becoming wave, shalt encircle all sands, being transmuted through all, the girdling of the sea. O high priest of Yacus, breathe thou upon us. To the dawn, defiance. Ye blood-red spearsmen of the dawn's array that drive my dust-clad nights of dream away, hold, for I will not yield. My moted soul shall dream in your despite, a refuge for the vanquished hosts of night that can not yield. The Decadence Tarnished we, tarnished, wastrels all, and yet the art goes on, goes on. Broken our strength, yea, as crushed reeds we fall, and yet the art, the art goes on. Bearers of beauty flame and wane, the sunset shadow and the roses bloom, the sapphire seas grow dull to shine again, as new day glistens in the old day's room. Broken our manhood for the rack and strain, Drink of our hearts, the sunset and the cry. Yo triumph, though our lips be slain, we see art living and exult to die. Ready Vivus. Hail Michael Agnolo, my soul lay slain, or else in torpor such, death seems more fair. I looked upon the light, if light were there, I knew it not, there seemed not any pain nor joy, nor thought, nor glorious deed, nor strain, of any song that half-remembered were, for sign of quickness in that soul but bare, gaunt walls alone me seemed it to remain. Thou praisest Dante well, my lord, no tongue, can tell of him what told of him should be, for on blind eyes his splendour shines too strong, if so his soul goes on unceasingly. Shall mine own flame count flesh one life too long, to hold its light and bear ye company. And now there's an empty page and the next page has its title in some kind of copper plate gothic capitals. And the title is Fistulae. In quotes. To make her madrigal, who shall the rose sprays bring? to make her madrigal, and bid my heart to sing. The Song Love thou thy dream, all base love scorning, love thou the wind, and here take warning, that dreams alone can truly be, for tis in dream I come to thee. Motif I have heard a wee wind searching, through still forests for me, I have seen a wee wind searching over still sea. Through woodlands dim have I taken my way, and over silent waters night and day have I sought the wee wind. La Regina Avrilus 
Lady of rich low, queen of the spring's embrace, your arms are long like bows of ash, mid laugh broken streams, spirit of rain on shore, breath of the poppy flower, all the wood thy bower, and the hills thy dwelling place. This will I no more dream, warm is thine arms alow, warm is the gust of breath, that ere thy lips meet mine, kissed my cheek and saith, This is the joy of earth, here is the wine of mirth, Drain ye one goblet sure. Take ye the honey cup, the honeyed song raise up, Drink of the springs allure, April and dew and rain, Brown of the earth sing sure, Cheeks and lips and hair, And soft breath that kisseth where, Thy lips have come not yet to drink. Moss and the mould of earth, These be the couch of mirth, Long arms thy bows of shade, April alluring as the blade, Of grass doth catch the dew, and make it crown to hold the sun, banner be you, above my head, glory to all wold displayed, April alluring, glory bold. Arouse. Save ye, merry gentlemen, vagabonds and rovers, hell take the hindmost, we're here for the clovers. Soul sings the preacher, our joy is the light, gold bulls ambition, grass our delight. Save ye, merry gentlemen, were and dew of earth, beauty without raiment, reed pipes and mellow mirth, scot free no payment. God be for heaven, clay the poet's birth. Save ye, merry gentlemen, wind and dew and spray of sea, hell take the hindmost, foot or sail for Arcady, voice of lark and breath of bee, hell take the hindmost. Our drink shall be the orange wine, house of bows and roof of vine, hell take the hindmost. Laugh and lips and gleam of hair, four kiss breath and shoulders bare, save you, queen of April. La Regina Avrilus Loquita, the queen of Avrilus speaks. Follow, follow, breath of mirth, my bed, my bower green of earth, nought else hath any worth, save ye, Jolif Bachelier, hell take the hindmost. Nicotine, a hymn to the dope. Goddess of the murmuring courts, nicotine, my nicotine, hoory of the mystic sports, trailing robed in gabardine, gliding where the breath have glided, hidden sylph of filmy veils, truth behind the dream is veiled, even as thou art, smiling ever, ever gliding. Wraith of wraiths, dim lights dividing, purple, grey, and shadow green, goddess, dream grace, nicotine. Goddess of the shadow's lights, nicotine, my nicotine, some would set old earth to rights, thou and I, none such I ween. Veils of shade are dream dividing, huris dancing, intergliding, wraith of wraiths and dream of faces, silent guardian of the old, unhallowed places utter symbol of all old sweet druidings, memory of witched wold and green, nicotine, my nicotine. Beneath the shadows of thy weaving, dreams that need no undeceiving, love that longer hold me not, dreams I dream not any more, fragrance of old sweet forgotten places, smiles of dream lit flit by faces, all as perfume Arab sweet, deck the high road to thy feet. As were Godiva's coming fated, and all the April's blush belated, were lain before her carpeting, the stones of Coventry with spring. So thou, my mist and wreathed queen, nicotine, white nicotine, riding and gloried in thy hair, makest by road of our dreams thy thoroughfare. This is the second poem in the collection called In Tempore Senectutis, meaning uh, in old age, I think. And this one is subtitled An Anti-Stave for Dowson, um, presumably Ernest Dowson, the decadent, who died young. When I am old, I will not have you look apart from me into the cold, friend of my heart, nor be sad in your remembrance of the careless mad heart semblance that the wind hath blown away when I am old. 
When I am old and the white hot wonder fire unto the world seem cold, my soul's desire, know you then that all life shower, the rain of the years, that hour, shall make blow for us one flower, including all when we are old. When I am old, if you remember any love save what is then, heart light unto life December, be your joy of past sweet chalices, to know then naught but this. How many wonders are less sweet than love I bear to thee when I am old? Ultra Latore, Rolando There dwelt a lady in a tower high, foul beasts surrounded it, as scattered them and left her free. O oh, la, O oh, la, the green wood tree hath many a smooth sword under it. My lady hath a long red cloak, her robe was of the sun. This blade hath broke a baron's yoke that hath such word on one. Yea, I have broke my lord Gloom's yoke, new yoke will I have none, save the yoke that shines in the golden bow betwixt the rain and the sun. O la, O la, the good green wood, the good green wood is free. Say who will lie in the bracken high and laugh and laugh for the winds with me. And now the concluding passage of the collection. Just in time for some machine noise to enter into the background. Make strong old dreams, lest this our world lose heart. For man is a skin full of wine, but his soul is a whole full of God. And the song of all time blows through him, as wind through a knot hold board. Though man be a skin full of wine, yet his heart is a little child that croucheth low beneath the wind when the god storm battereth wild. And that's the end. That's a Lume Spento by Ezra Pound.